Welcome to the Mr. Spreadsheet YouTube channel. In this video, we will design a sales daybook spreadsheet template that allows you to record details of your business's sales invoices. So, starting from scratch, we will take you through the various processes such that when we have finished, you will have a useful and informative sales analysis tool. Just before we start, here are some of the Excel functions and techniques that we will be demonstrating in this video. We'll demonstrate how to calculate taxes with gross, net and tax value calculations. We will be using Excel's filtering tool together with the subtotal 9 routine. Then we'll show you how to use the data validation tool for creating lists and using the sum if command to further analyze customer performance. Open up a blank worksheet and navigate to cell B6 and type in the word line. Move the cursor one to the right and in cell C6 type in date. In D6 type in customer and in E6 type in invoice number and finally in F6 enter gross value. These are our basic sales day book headings. Now to analyze each entry we may need to isolate any tax that may be due and to analyze or code the net value of each transaction. Let's do this by firstly entering the following. In cell G6 type in tax and in H6 make this net value and in I6 through to K6 they become sales A, sales B and sales C. We now have all the sales daybook headings in place. Now with the range B6 through to K6 highlighted select the make bold tool from the home ribbon and now adjust the column widths such that each column has plenty of room. Let's give our sales day book a title. Select the range B5 through to D5 and click on the Merge and Center tool on the home ribbon and increase the font size, align the cells to the left and enter in the title of your choice. Now navigate to cell B7 and enter in the number 1 and in cell B8 enter in the number 2. With both of these cells highlighted we can use Excel's data sequencing tool to populate the next 10 lines. Simply drag down the highlighted range to cell B18. We now have lines 1 through to 12 successfully entered in the cells daybook. Our next task is to populate the first line with either text or formulae. So, in cell C7 type in a date and in cell D7 type in the name of your customer and in E7 type in a reference such as an invoice number and finally enter the gross value of 1200 into cell F7. Now we need our first formula. We need to calculate the tax element of the gross value. Now, in most countries, sales and indeed purchase taxes are normally a set percentage of the net value of the transaction. The net value is therefore the gross value less the tax amount. Let's assume a tax rate of 20%. So our tax calculation would be 20 divided by 120 times the gross value. This would make our Excel formula equals 20 divided by 120 times F8. Now we have the tax value. Our net value in cell H7 simply becomes equals F7 
minus G7. Finally, we need to analyse the net value amongst the sales analysis codes. Our spreadsheet has only three distinct analysis codes. Now your sales daybook may well have many more. I have split the 1000 net value as to 600 in cell J7 and 400 in cell K7. To make sure that I don't make a mistake, I've added a formula in cell M7 to ensure that the net value, less the sum of cells A, cells B and cells C, returns a zero. The formula for this is plus H7 minus sum, open brackets, I7, colon, K7, close brackets. And to make sure that the gross value, less the tax element, equals the net value, I've entered a check total in N7 such that F7 minus G7 minus H7 should also equal 0. We have now completed our first line of data and formulas. Now, whilst the data elements for rows B through to F are variables, the formulas for tax, net value, and the check totals are actually constants. So this enables us to use the copy down routine to populate these same formulas all the way down to the end of our data range. Highlight cell G7 and copy and drag down the formula to G18, the last line of our data range. Now navigate to H7 and repeat the process down to H18. Highlight the range M7 to N7 and copy, drag these down to rows M and N18, thereby doing two columns at once. OK, we now have our basic sales daybook created and we can now populate the variable data and test the formulas for each line. Now, if you are following this video and entering the data and formulas as you go along, then you might like to pause the video in a minute and enter in the data for the next 11 lines. As you complete each line, then the total for tax and net value will automatically populate. Once we've completed this, we can then move on to the next section where we will add up all of the totals, round up our decimal values to two decimal places, and check for any errors. You'll notice that many of the tax and net value amounts are poorly formatted with multiple decimal places. We're going to use Excel's round command to automatically format these to two decimal places. Select cell G7 and isolate the formula by enclosing it in brackets after the initial equals sign, such that the formula reads equals open brackets 20 divided by 120 times F7 close brackets. Once we have isolated the formula, then we can apply another command to the isolated formula. That command is the Excel round function. Simply type in the word round after the equal sign and before the first bracket. Enter a new open bracket so that you've now got two of them and then navigate your cursor past the last bracket and enter a comma and then the number two and then insert another close bracket. Your new formula reads equals round open bracket open bracket 20 divided by 120 times F7 close bracket comma 2 close bracket. Now the formula in G7 has two components. One, it works out tax based on the gross value 
and secondly, the round command rounds up or down to the two nearest decimal places. Now, once you have the correct formula syntax in G7, simply copy down the formula from G7 to G18 using the copy and drag method we used earlier. Notice how the formatting of all the numbers has changed from a clumsy multiple decimal places to a more succinct and usable two decimal places. Okay, so now we have completed our data entry and we have validated the values against the control checks in columns M and N. In the next section, we will add totals to the various columns and then create two useful data analysis tools for you to further analyse your data. We will now add Excel's filtering tool to our sales daybook and create a subtotaling routine to calculate the values of our filtered data. Firstly, select the entire data range from B6 through to K19 and with this range highlighted, click on the Sort and Filter tool on the Home ribbon. From the options available, click on Filter. You will now find that your column descriptions in row 6 all have small downward pointing arrows appearing to the right of each cell. Select cell F4 and enter in the following command equals subtotal open brackets open brackets again 9 close brackets comma F7 colon F18 and close the brackets. Now this subtotal 9 function calculates the total of the filtered range of F7 through to F18. Now, with cell F4 still the active cell, drag and copy this across to cell K4, such that all of our value fields are subjected to this subtotaling routine, which we can analyse further in the final section. Now we'll create another analysis routine to allow us to easily view totals, not by column values, but by row values. Select cell E2, and from the data ribbon, select the data validation tool. Using this tool, we will create a list of our customers. So, from the data validation dialog box, select list from the allow field. Navigate to the source field, and single click the mouse. Now move your cursor to cell D7 which contains the first customer in our sales daybook and then drag down to the last cell which is D18. Now click the OK button to save and close down the data validation dialog box. Select cell E2 again and you will find that it now contains a drop down box option located to the right of the cell. Finally, we need some totals for this section, so select cell E2. Now, we need a sum if command to calculate all of the column totals where the row contains the customer name that we have selected in E2. So select ABC Limited from the drop-down box in E2. The Excel sum if command uses three sets of data to complete its routine. The first set of data is the data range, which in our case is the customer name range from D7 through to D18. The second component is the criteria for the routine. Now we want this to be whatever value is in cell E2, which is our selected customer. ABC Limited. And finally, the third element 
is the value or some range and for gross values it is F7 through to F18. By entering and selecting each of your three data components you can now enter the formula equals sum if open brackets D7 through to D18 comma E2 comma F7 colon F18 and close the brackets. So simply enter this formula into cell F2. All we have to do now is to lock the coordinates of the first two elements of our sum if command such that when we copy and drag the formula across the various columns the data range and the criteria range become fixed. So simply change the formula in F2 by locking the first component by using the F4 function key to place dollar signs in both coordinates. Now do the same for the second component such that its coordinates are also enclosed in dollar signs. Okay, now just make sure that your final formula in cell F2 corresponds with mine and now we simply copy and drag this formula across to column K. And in the next section we will tidy up our worksheet, we'll apply some formatting and then test out our work. Select cell E4 and type in filtered totals. From the page layout ribbon uncheck the view grid lines box. Select the range E2 to K4 and make bold. Select column M and column N and change the font colour to mid-grey. Select column F through to N and using the cell format tool set the cell category to number with two decimal places and the 1000 comma separator checked. Navigate to cell F19 and double click the sum command from the home ribbon and using the drag and copy method copy this through to cell L19. Select the range F19 through to K19 and using the borders tool select the top and double bottom border. Now select row 5 and click the insert tool on the home ribbon to add in an extra line above the title row. Finally, adjust the column widths such that all cell contents are clearly visible. Now, let's test out our work. Let's do one or two basic arithmetic tests. Navigate to cell E2 and delete the contents. This will automatically set the range F2 to K2 back to zero. Now, Check that the values for the filtered totals in F4 through to K4 are exactly the same as the totals in F20 through to K20. And finally, check that all the values in columns M and N are zero. Now let's test out the filtering routine. Click on the drop-down box immediately to the right of the customer field in cell D7 and from the drop-down box select ABC Limited. You do this by firstly deselecting the Select All box and then selecting the ABC Limited box. Now click OK. The sales daybook truncates to show only ABC Limited's data lines and presents their values in the cells F4 through to K4. Now select the drop down box to the right of cell E2 and choose our customer ABC Limited. The total value of all transactions relating to ABC Limited are now posted in the range F2 through to K2. Both the filtered totals and the customer totals should correspond. 
you can simply return the filtered values back to normal by selecting the Sort and Filter tool from the Home ribbon and then clicking the Filter tool. This now completes our development of the Sales Daybook and the additional two analysis routines. We do hope that you enjoyed our spreadsheet video and that there was lots of content that you found both useful and informative. Now, if you would like us to send you a copy of this spreadsheet file, then please subscribe to our channel and give this video a big thumbs up. Alternatively, please visit one of our channels on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Now, if you are a small business and want to keep your bookkeeping records in Excel, then why not watch our accounting spreadsheet tutorial? Alternatively, why not view our How to Keep Your Accounts in Excel video? This is our easy to use and inexpensive solution for your small business bookkeeping needs. Thank you once again for watching our spreadsheet video and, oh yes, please do subscribe to our channel.